Hello and welcome back into another episode of Craven Some Raven. And this is going to be my review of the Ravens versus Jacksonville Jaguars preseason game, well, week one. And might I add that it was a schlacking. And maybe it was just a shout out to Earl Thomas, our free agency acquisition, because if you don't know, the final score was 29 to 0. We gave him a good old goose egg, and the defense showed out. And uh, they were they Jags really had no response to our to our defense, or at least their offense had nothing to answer for our blitzing scheme. I don't even really think it was that intense of a blitzing scheme, but you know we'll we'll get into that. So I'll start off just going over some like overall themes and stuff that I liked, and then I'll probably go into some some different players and stuff I saw, some things of note, some highlights, some lowlights and some uh yeah just going over each and every kind of player basically maybe not all of them but you know most of them so like i said it man it it was a slacking you know anytime you shut out a team there's always the excuse hey it's preseason they weren't starting their offensive starters but hey we our top five corners weren't playing either so our <clears throat> our secondary unit should be one of the best in the league and it is one of the deepest position groups actually it is the deepest position group and so many of these other players probably could start on another uh, on another squad uh, i was just watching some of the steelers game and it's like man any of our like second or third string corners could be starting for them because they got nobody their defense is kind of piss poor and but you know we uh gave them the goose egg and anytime you shut someone out, you know, like I said, there are those excuses. But these are professional football players. It is not easy to stifle someone for that long. It doesn't matter, especially in the preseason once you get your second and third team guys in there where they're not, they're not the best NFL players, and a lot of them won't even subsequently be on the team. Uh, a lot of them won't make the final roster, but yet they're still competing, still fighting for their jobs. And that's why preseason in general, that it can be some awesome football, especially if you're a super fan of a single team. You're following every single player like I am, so you know all their names. You don't want to see them cut, but you know it happens. But they're fighting for their jobs, so they're playing super hard. And the same goes for the other team. All these players are playing super hard, but luckily the Ravens have one of the deepest, deepest rosters in the entire league, and that's part of the reason why they've gone undefeated. And so they've expanded their their preseason win streak to 14 and I couldn't be happier I know it is just preseason and it doesn't matter but you know what winning is winning and it still feels good you know you'd rather would you rather beat someone 29-0 or be beaten 29-0 would you rather be shut out or cause a shutout let's be honest but you know starting things off when you started the game uh you know they say Lamar Jackson you know he wasn't perfect but he looked good I mean I when I saw it, I saw, I don't know if it's just me, but Lamar looked like he wasn't in a good mood while he was playing. His body language just wasn't, wasn't there, you know? And uh, before, before I get more into this, um, I, wanted, I wanted to record this after I got a chance to watch the game again. You know, you watch it the first time, your emotions are all over the place. You know, football's finally back. Oh, my God. And I just wanted to watch it again to really, you know, key in on some of the players who had some highlights and, you know, kind of watch them throughout the game a little bit more, you know, watch them with some heavier eyes. But um, I don't have Game Pass, and I was trying to find a way where I could watch it again without paying 99 bucks. But you know what? I might have to just do that. Or because I haven't found a way to watch games, replays for free, unless I just uh, <clears throat> hit up the Reddit streams and then like recorded my computer and so I could have them personally and then watch them again. But you know, we'll, we'll have to look into that and see how that goes. But you know, I, I just didn't want to pay because you know, money is money's tight. It, I'm, not, I'm not rich, so. So, but I, I wanted to, I wanted to watch it again, you know, just to get a, a second, a second look, you know, you always see something that you didn't quite see and with anything, you know, you watch a movie a second time, you'll see some foreshadowing that you didn't catch. So I'm just doing this based off of memory and then a day going by and I, I've seen a few breakdowns or at least people talking about the breakdown, but you know, every, they haven't, I haven't caught my eye onto stuff that I hadn't seen or didn't notice. But with that being said, going back, Lamar, yeah, he looked like. He, his head, he, he kept his shoulders looked low uh, on the very first play, right before 
uh, he hiked the ball. He was still looking at his wristband like he didn't know what the play was or what the route combination was or which way he had to turn. It looked like he was looking over the play before he was going it. And I know uh, the offense, it wasn't this revolutionary offense. They were doing a very basic, basic offense like most teams kind of do. And it kind of showed that they were pretty lethargic. I mean, Lamar Jackson had ha did have his moments. He did uh, overthrow or miss a few guys. But all in all, he made a quite quite a few good uh, completions. I really liked what I saw. I saw some progression, you know. As long as you see progress, you see someone improving, then that's then that's good. And so the offense, you know, they put up 29 points. There's a lot of kicked field goals. I wish they would have capped off some more drives with some touchdowns. But, you know, let's save that for another day. Let's hope it is only the first preseason game. And luckily our defense was just playing lights out. So really all they needed was one one kick and that, and they would have won the game. I mean, and this was this was two defensive teams in general, you know, going at it. So it was good to see our our base offense at least be able to produce against a a good defense. And I know, hey, they didn't have their starters, but neither do we. And it, it, production's production. It do, it doesn't fucking matter. These are still some of the best football players in the world. Even if some of them aren't aren't going to end up making a final 53, they are still some of the best football players in the world. They'd beat anybody on the street in a fight in a in any kind of football contest so so yeah the, so the first offense they finally I think Lamar he'd had three drives you know he got into the end zone once or they got into the end zone once but you know he didn't run a single time <clears throat> and I'm sure I'm sure that was by design even though after after the game they said that was not by design that that was probably Lamar's decision but he was saying it was the coach's decision it was the game plan but, you know, when I was seeing him, when he didn't look like he was in a good mood, I mean, you can go back and watch it. That, that first drive, you know, his head's down. He's not really smiling. He, he, his shoulders just looked like they were down. And his head, he had it cocked to the side a little bit. Like, like I, I've seen him for at least enough games to know that that's, that's his body language of saying he's not completely and utterly happy. And I thought originally that that was because they told him, hey, you are not running. You are not running at all in this game. Because there was a few times where... If he took it and ran, he would have had at least 15 yards just straight up on a on a sprint. But you know, still saw some some good catches, some good uh, some good receiving. A lot of the wide receivers did did some good stuff. Uh, Trace McSorley came in, uh, did his thing, and the offense. You know, they they were kicking, uh, not not too scabby. I mean, they got stymied a few times, but you know, that's just what happens. It is very early in the process, and apparently they weren't running like any other good juicy plays. They only. They only ran a few here and there and switched it up a little bit. But, you know, special teams, uh, they they were pretty decent, except for the very first they ran one back, but it was called back due to a pass interference. And every single kickoff, it seems like there's a pass interference. So let's let's just get used to that, I guess. You know, I was hoping they they should probably change this rule, honestly. There's too, there's too many penalties on that play, and it's it can be such an exciting play. They really... They're really uh, messing things up for the excitement of the sport by making it so easy to get a penalty on these plays. I really would like to have the NFL go back to it, to the kickoffs and punt returns, special teams being a huge part of the game. You know, momentum swings having a huge impact on the game. But so far, it seems like uh, the penalties are getting in the way of that. But yeah, our our defense super deep stopped them the entire game. They didn't cross the 50-yard line once. Like. Like I've been saying, and like the Ravens basically said in a statement, we are the best defense in the league. Obviously, it's the Jags offense. Oh, they're not that great. Listen, like I already said, these are professional football players. Anytime you can shut someone out, you know, someone who's best in the world, you know, top, I don't know how many players are in the NFL, but like you're like a top 500 player, and you stopped a group of them for four quarters straight for 60 minutes, and they had no answers for us. That is domination. I don't care how you look at it. I don't care what kind of excuses when it comes to saying, oh, they weren't the best. Yeah, neither were our guys, okay? And we shut them down, motherfucker. So I guess I'll just get into some players now. I already kind of talked about Lamar Jackson, but yeah, he looked good. He didn't He didn't play too much. I would have liked to see him run and take a few. Just, you know, I understand the preservation factor, but if you want to run an offense, get used to how the game is going to be going, you know, you go ahead and tuck it once or twice. You know, obviously don't take the big hit, but, you know, get, get into the flow of the game and, and 
it's basically practice for a game and practice like you play. You know, I, I, w I would rather see him get a first down and maybe take a hit than not take any and then, you know, we end up having, having a three and out or get stymied on a drive. But, you know, all in all, Lamar, he looked better. He looked improved. Obviously still not the best pocket passer, but I don't think he ever will be. And that's what it is. His legs far and away make up for that. So, so it was good to see some improvement from him. And then next on the list... Uh, Trace McSorley came in. He was our quarterback for most of the game, and he came in and he looked better than I thought. I, you know, I didn't get a chance to really watch him uh, in the off season. Only the highlights and people that that the website and people recording, you know, kind of put out on the internet. And people people who have gone to practices and talked about it, and they said he was looking pretty decent. And I really liked what I saw. He didn't look like a sixth round draft pick. He didn't look like a sixth round. Uh, quarterback pick even though you can always just point to you know Tom Brady was a sixth round draft pick so maybe Mick Sorley will be Tom Brady you know who knows but he is quite the goddamn competitor you know he he wasn't the he wasn't a perfect passer but not by a long shot but he throw a bunch of beautiful balls he let his guys his wide receivers he'd throw some up and let them compete for it and I really liked the way he managed the game he was fighting he was competing and that was his kind of thing coming out of college he's he is a gamer he is someone who gets in there and and uh, goes full tilt, 130%, as they say. You know, I'm, I'm putting in 110%. Motherfucker, that's impossible. So quit with your stupid statement and get out there and play some football. But no, I, I, was, I was impressed by Trace McSorley. I thought he handled the offense very well. You know, coming, like I said, coming in to the NFL as a six-round draft pick, uh, getting a few plays under his belt, running, you know, looking fast on the field, looking decisive, uh, not, not taking too many hits. You know, making just good decisions and commanding the offense with some poise. Uh, that's very encouraging, especially when RG3, he's not going to be here. Uh, he's not going to finish his career here. His plan is to leave. And so it's good to see that Trace McSorley, it looks like a viable backup. You know, in a, in a pinch situation, if Lamar happens to go down for a couple plays like he did twice last year, which I hope doesn't happen, but it, it seems like Trace McSorley can come in and command the same exact offense because he's a similar type quarterback. And I just, you know, really liked what I saw from him. And obviously, RG3, he did not play because of that finger in, uh, thumb injury that uh, I think he's got like a hairline fracture. And it's, it's a fracture, but not in his hairline. It's a fracture, a hairline fracture. It, that, that always confused me. He's got a fracture. There's so many people who just get all sorts of fractures in their hairline. Crazy. Um, anyways, yeah, no, so he didn't play. Uh, I'm sure he could. I'm sure he could go out there. He's he's throwing in practice right now, but, you know, they don't want to risk it. You know, there, there's no biscuit to get, so why would you risk it? Um, so going to the offensive line, you know, I didn't really see much. I didn't really notice anything. I didn't see any, um, you know, it, I don't really watch the offensive line during the game. You know, I, I was more watching the skill positions. That's why I kind of wanted to watch the game again before I recorded this episode because I wanted to, you know, you know, take a deeper look into the offensive line and really put more of my attention on that because I wasn't really watching them too much. But, you know, there, I don't remember any, like, crazy breakdowns uh, in the passing game. But uh, when it came to our running, our run blocking, they didn't, they didn't seem to be opening up that many holes. I didn't, I didn't notice anything or see any huge runs. There, there were a few good runs here and there, but... Yeah, I don't think it was more. Off I think it was more the running backs doing that than the offensive line. You know, opening up gaping holes, and that. And I think part of that is because we Lamar Jackson wasn't out there running, and he wasn't a running threat. Same with Trace McSorley. He scrambled a couple times, but they weren't really using that designed run to really open up extra holes. And that's kind of what this offense is going to be good at. You know, if we if you don't have a great offensive line, you used other techniques, different skills, like using your quarterback as a threat to open holes, make the defenders stop and wait. And then that that allows the offensive lineman to, to gain some leverage and then hopefully open up a big old hole that I, even I could run through, a, a big old truck, Mack truck size holes. So I didn't really watch them too much. Um, but all in all, I, I would say, like, decent. You know, I can't really put a bad grade on it since I didn't, I didn't really watch it full tilt. I don't know how many sacks we got or how many sacks there were on the offense. So, other than that, yeah, uh, pretty decent. Like, uh, Orlando Brown. Um, Orlando Brown looked really good, you know, especially because when they're going down the field, I guess, to the right, to the, uh, is that the home? Is it the home end zone? Either way, you know, you got, 
You got uh, Orlando Brown right front and center on the screen, and he's such a big guy. It's impossible to miss, and he looked really good. You know, once he gets his hands on you, you ain't going anywhere. So Zeus the Juice throwing lightning bolts on people left and right, having kids with, with, uh, um, with the mortals and putting demigods all around the world. That's what he was doing during that game. He was dropping demigods, motherfucker. Um, but, yeah, he looked really good. Uh, Ronnie Stanley, he always looked good. But that's just the, that is just the uh, tackles because they're front and center, you know, when you're watching the game. Uh, tight ends, uh, I don't think they really produced too much other than uh, undrafted guys. And, you know, uh, the one guy, he, he went out and make a, made a diving catch, and so that was good to see, especially on a third down. So he went, went and dove for the ball, fighting for his roster spot, fighting for the ball, and he went, and went ahead and got it. The other guy, I think it was Scarf, you know, I saw him. He caught one, but he dropped another one. Uh, he dropped one that was an important play, too, and it looked, and it looked like he could have caught it. So that was, that was disappointing. Um, but you know we we have the starting the starting three already set and I, there's no reason to be nervous about that you know they didn't really have much production but I think they wanted to work the wide receivers and running backs more in this game. Uh, so moving on to uh, let's let's just go running backs first. We'll save wide receivers for last on the offensive side of the ball because everyone loves the wide receivers and loves talking about them. So we'll wait we'll wait next for that. Uh, but the running backs in general. I think they did a pretty decent job. Like I said, the offensive line wasn't opening up too many holes, so we just got a chance to see how they looked. Gus Edwards, uh, he did all right. He had a few runs. Uh, Kenneth Dixon, he had that one uh, pretty good pretty good run to the outside. Uh, it looks like he, he shook loose. I, I don't remember if it was a catch out of the backfield or if he just ran to the right side of the line. But, you know, once he got out in daylight, it looked like he's like, where am I going, where am I going? He's juking left and right, doing a spin move. He's like, wait, you what are you doing? He looked like he didn't know what he was doing out there. But in general, he looked pretty good because, you know, he's he has got the juke moves down. That's not his issue. His issue is staying healthy and those PEDs, those Mexican supplements. So if he gets all that together, you know, he looked pretty good as a, as a runner, very instinctual. And uh, if, if he continues that kind of play without injury and all that, I think he can make this team. Uh, our, our rookie, uh, Mark Ingram, he did not play, so we didn't get a chance to see anything from him. But our rookie, Justice Hill, I thought he was, out of everybody, he was the most impressive to me. He looked the most explosive. He looked, I know he is like the, one of the fastest guys, but, you know, he looked like he was fighting hard, fighting for extra yards, uh, turning his legs to the very last second. I remember that wheel route. It was on a third down. Trace McSorley passed it to him, and he looked dead to rights. It looked like it was going to be a stop for like two yards, but he got around that corner with his speed and uh, cut up the sideline for some extra yards. It ended up being like a 12 or 15-yard 15 yard play and uh, that was really good especially on a third down fighting for your yards but yeah I thought I thought Justice Hill looked very good he looked fast he looked quick uh, and once he gets into the open field that's when he's dangerous uh, he only got into the open field twice but he had people around him like a lot of people so he didn't have a huge chance to make people miss and then inside the line I, I thought he did pretty decent just fighting really hard looking really quick because all of them all of our running backs he looked the quickest and you know if you if you just want to have the fastest offense on the field, which is what I think the Ravens are kind of going for, it looked that it kind of it kind of looked like he could be in the starting lineup. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad if you had him back there, you know, change of pace type guy as of for right now. But when it comes to in the future, maybe down the line, you need some fresh legs to start a drive off. You know, let's say someone gets injured, and you know that's you know that's why kind of Gus Edwards. And Kenneth Dixon, they came on at the end of the year because they were fresh. They, they didn't really play all that much all season. So when they came in, they had fresh legs, ready to run quick. Uh, their legs weren't all beat up. So uh, I'm, I'm excited for the second half of the year when I think Justice Hill will come in and make a huge impact because he'll be resting for the first half of the year. And then once he gets in, he's going to use those quick legs to get around defenses. And they won't be ready because they're going to be trying to guard Lamar Jackson and trying to watch Justice Hill and the pass with Marquise Brown. And uh, I think it's going to be very dangerous. Also, um, Delance Turner, I thought he was running hard. He's he's one of my favorite guys, especially after last season, that home run ability. And I, he had a few. He had one really long run where he bounced it outside, and he looked very good. Uh, he's He is more of a uh, juke it and cut it outside, stop and, you know, go back for a second to go upfield. You know, sometimes you got to go forward or backwards to go forwards. That's kind of his running style. You know, very good balance, contact balance, but he was running hard. I thought he looked very good, made some good decisive cuts and, and got upfield in a hurry. Really good to see from him. Good to see him continue that kind of streak that he uh, ended with last year. He he did make the 
roster before Gus Edwards, so obviously the Ravens really liked his running style and what he brought to the table, and it was good to see him get in there. And then the the last guy, um, fuck, what's his name? Tyler Irvin. You know, I didn't, I didn't really think he did all that well in the backfield, but he looked super impressive in the punt return game and the kick return game. I thought he looked more impressive than Cyrus Jones, but it's going to be, you know, is is him being that little bit much better than Cyrus Jones in the special teams department, is that going to be worth more than having an extra corner and someone who's adequate and decent and had some good plays last year? You know, I, it's going to be very tough for him to make this roster. Unless he, if he, if he brings like two or three to the house during the preseason, then I could see him making the roster over Cyrus Jones. But I think they like Cyrus Jones not only uh, in special teams. I think he's a very adequate punt returner. But I think they also like his ability to to uh, play the corner position. And he's not he's not too shabby. He got that interception. So, you know, that, that is going to be a battle that we have to continue to watch. And I am excited to see going forward. But before we get to the defense and all that, we got the last and final position on the offense. And everyone... Everyone loves to talk wide receiver, baby, and there's tons of them to talk about. So let's get into it. I'm going to pause this real quick because, goddamn, I'm thirsty. 21 minutes straight. Woo, I'm talking fast. Let's go. I'm excited. It's football, baby. Oh, <coughs> oh shit. So, yes, the wide receivers. First and foremost, Willie Sneed. He is going to be our top dog, our number one dude, our man with a plan. And he he looked like it. He looked... He got the one catch, and he scored a touchdown. You know, that's one for one, baby. That's 100% right there. What more could you ask for? And that connection only, it looks pretty good between him and Lamar. Lamar threw that beautiful pass to him right in the uh, right before the end zone. He Willie Sneed made a beautiful cut. You know, he's not the fastest guy, but he just knows how to make the right cut at the right time. And uh, he's, a, he's a baller, man. He's a true dog. And I really liked what I saw from him, you know, scoring that one pass. You know, old reliable right now. And Willie Sneed, love him. Love him as a leader. I think he's going to be great for this team. And I think they should probably sign him for more. I think he might, I don't know how long his contract is, but, you know, he should just stay on the team. He's pretty good. So... Next on the list is Miles Boykin, the man targeted the most and the man who's been the talk of the town. Miles Boykin, your wife. Miles Boykin, porn star, Notre Dame. Um, <laughs> anyways, Miles Boykin. Boykin, your wife. Now, he he looked good at the very start. He, he made a couple catches, but then... Then he had a drop. There was a pass from Lamar that was a little bit behind him, but it looked like he could have caught that and he would have gotten the first down with it. But you know he didn't he didn't have his hands on it. And then later on he he dropped another pass. And then before things got better, Trace McSorley, you know, threw a shitty pass to him and it ended up being intercepted. But he was a wide receiver and he is a big guy. So you'd hope in those 50-50 kind of shit situations he can at least get a hand in there and maybe prevent the interception no matter how shitty the ball is thrown. You know, basically just become a DB at that point. He's got those long arms. But after that, he he turned it on. He had that one drive that was the Miles Boykin drive that ended on a touchdown. That didn't count because it was brought back by James Hurst. You motherfucker. He's 64, right? If if he's 64, god damn it, you know the one the one, you know exciting not the one but you know, the touchdown that really looked awesome and made us hopeful for our a drafted wide receiver. You know the first time we'd be excited and and goddamn James Hurst ruined that. Get off the fucking team, you nerd. You know out of all the players on the team, he is the most widely hated. Fuck you, James Hurst, because he's the only one where you're you don't see the upside. Where you've seen his upside and you've seen his ceiling. His ceiling is there, but everyone else, they seem like they can, uh, they can play pretty good and they they have an upside. Sorry, there's got a update on my phone. Uh, so, <clears throat> but getting back to Miles Boykin, yeah. So he had that <clears throat> Trace McSorley threw that back shoulder route to him, and oh my God, they should they should throw that play ten times a game. That is unbeatable. He is so fast, and he's able to get behind the DBs with that threat. So they're running full speed to try to keep up with him, and he just cuts on a dime, and uh, that back shoulder just gets that ball. Man, it is a thing of beauty. I think they should run that ten times a game, and I think they could probably get eight out of ten of those. You know, I don't think, and I think the ones that they don't get, they're they're just going to be bad passes. I really do think that is an unbeatable type play. No matter how well you're covered, he stops on a dime and gets up and grabs it. He times it perfectly, and he was really good at that at Notre Dame. So I can only see that being his perfect route. But not only that, 
on the, I don't know if it was the next play, but in that same drive, he got behind the defender and scored that touchdown. So he's got the speed to do it, and I'm super excited because this is, you know, barring uh, Hollywood Brown going out and doing it and proving his skill set like I think he will, uh, we the Ravens finally have a drafted wide receiver who's uh, garnering a lot of hype, a lot of hype in the preseason and in training camp, and actually bringing it to the game. And I think the the Ravens they saw his potential in training camp. That's why after those first few little dropsy woes, uh, they kept going to him because they they saw they saw the potential in training camp, and they wanted to see him produce. You know, get over and see if he can get over those. Uh, those woes and see if he can shake off a bad play and he did it and he did it well and i'm super excited i can't wait to see him run with the starters and i'm uh i'm 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 a huge fan of miles boykin uh i think he is now a sleeper in this draft probably should have been drafted higher now with uh you know everything everything that we know now you know 2020 hindsight's 2020 captain hindsight does anybody remember that uh South Park, Captain Hindsight. Like, help us, Captain Hindsight. Oh, well, you shouldn't have done that. Thanks, Captain Hindsight. Anyways, so, Miles Boykin, boys. So, the next wide receiver I want to talk about. Um, let's see. What do I want to talk about next? So, next, uh, Seth Roberts. You know, he seemed like he was running with the ones, but he didn't get any passes. There was one that was floating over his head, so not really much to report on that. Um, so that's, yeah, another reason I, w I just wanted to watch it some more so I could see who's getting open and see how things are going. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to talk about Jaleel Scott because Jaleel Scott, he, he looks like the biggest dude out there. He looks super tall, looks super explosive. He caught that one awesome over the shoulder, not over the shoulder, but you know, another one of those back shoulder throws that he was just thrown up and he caught it. I would have liked to see him extend those arms because he is so long and lean and he's such a big, big guy. And, and, I, and I'm wondering, I'm honestly wondering, because he seems like he's killing it in training camp. That's at least the word out of camp. And he did it in, in the game. And for whatever reason, I thought he'd be running with the twos or the threes. I really thought he would be, he'd be working more with them. Um, I don't know why. I really don't. And it makes me wonder if he's actually in the doghouse. I don't, I don't know why. I, did, I remember seeing an interview with him. And he's, he, they were talking about special teams, and he, his facial expressions were like, nah, fuck special teams. But he was like, nah, it's, a, it's okay. Special teams is all right. But I didn't really believe him. Um, let's see, another wide receiver, uh, <clears throat> Antoine Wesley. He had the one drop, and he, he was killing it in camp. But, you know, it, it seemed like he wasn't. So I'd like to see some more from him. Um, but let's see, who else? Sean Monster, he had a few catches. It's going to be tough for him to make the team. But you know, you still like to see what he, what he uh, brings to the table. He could possibly make the practice squad. You know, he's short and shif shifty. Uh, I didn't see uh, Joe Horn Jr. at all. Uh, so, you know, we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, Jalen Smith, he had one like mega toss thrown to him, like a hail mary type situation. That was terribly overthrown. So, really didn't get to see much, much else from him. Um, any other wide receivers? I know I'm missing. I know I'm missing people. But either way, we'll move on to the defense. Um, a lot of our starters did not play. Uh, we, our, our top five corners did not play, but, you know, the corners came through. They stopped a lot of people individually. Uh, Anthony Averett, he had a few catches over him, but he looked pretty locked down. They, they targeted him a lot in that game, but I really liked what I saw from him. I've gone over him in the past, and I really like him as a player. Um, other than that, let's see. Um, Stanley Jean Baptiste was in the game. I think he had a, a pass breakup towards the end. Um, uh, Iman Marshall, he wasn't targeted at all, but uh, I saw him have like a nice hit on special teams. Um, any of the other corners? Oh yeah, Cyrus Jones, he had that pick six and that was awesome. You know, he read that perfectly and that wasn't his guy that he was guarding. He, he dropped off of his guy when he saw the ball being thrown and he grabbed that, picked it off and took it to the house. And the reason he got that pick is because of our pass rush. So I'll just move on to them. I think our, our D-line looked very good. And in general, um, Wink Martindale, he was blitzing all game. You know, the, the common theme in preseason is you don't blitz, you don't do any crazy plays. But Wink Martindale, he is a blitzing scheme. So he is going to go ahead and do that. You know, see how the players look. He wants to see how, how well his guys perform. Um, let's see. Players that I, that I liked, uh, 
Tim Williams, he looked like he was living in the backfield. He looked like he was good up against the run. I thought he was doing well. Chris Wormley, he had a few good plays uh, in the backfield. Uh, Brandon Williams didn't play. Michael Pierce, he used stout as always. Uh, I saw Willie Henry getting into the backfield a few times. Um, uh, rookie Dalen Mack, he, he looked like he held his own. He looked like at in a pinch, you know, he could step in for Brandon Williams or Michael Pierce. He brings that same skill set, run stuffing. And then also I thought there was, a, there was a few times where he's breaking into the backfield or there's like a blown play. And he looked athletic and quick out there, you know, strong at the point of the attack and then quick in the pass game. I really liked what I saw from him. And then, oh, yeah, Tyus Bowser, he was also looking good. You know, these second-year guys, Tim Williams and Tyus Bowser, both, both killing it, both, both looking really good. Uh, really liking what I'm seeing from them, especially in these contract years. You know, it's super important for them to uh, make their make themselves known, and I think they did a pretty good job, especially Tyus Bowser. I saw him in coverage, and he was on his man the entire time, looking real good. Um, oh, the sack daddy, uh, Jalen Ferguson. He looked really good to me. I know he was running with the threes, but, you know, he came in there, and they say, they say he's a one-trick pony, but you know what? He was very good. That bull rush was killing it. He got out a few times. He was just super disruptive and in the face so much, causing some some of those bad passes, you know, just being in his face, being in the quarterback's face and getting in there. Uh, I really liked what I saw from him, looking pretty promising. Also, uh, Shane Ray, I saw a few good plays from him, but then it seemed like he just disappeared. Another guy on the defensive line, at the very end of the game, um, out of nowhere, uh, number 51, I don't know who it is, but he was working hard. He was hustling. He was living in the backfield. He had a tip pass that was looking very, very good. I really liked what I saw. Oh, some safeties. Uh, ben and Jackson was looking really good. I liked what I saw from him. It's going to be tough for him to make the roster, though, just because we are so deep in the secondary because I think it's going to come down between him and Chuck Clark. And I really liked what I saw from Chuck Clark other than that one stupid play where he tipped the ball up to himself, tried to catch it one-handed. Yo, bro, just catch it with two hands, and then you can try to run with it. But, you know, that was a super impressive play, the way he went up and high-pointed that as hard as he could, as quick as he or, um just really got up there, really, really got up there. Sorry, I'm talking really quick because I'm trying to end this as soon as I can. I'm trying to get this over so I can check on something else. But, um, yeah, and I, I just talk fast, and, I, and I'm trying to remember. But, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and get through this. Um, let's see. Who else did I like? Ooh, yeah, we got to talk about the linebackers because Peanut was all over the field. He was looking good. He looked mid-season form. He looked like the dog. He was smacking people. He was on every single play. He was punishing people. That Peanut punch, man, he was looking good. I'm super excited. Can't wait for him to, uh, for us to start the season and see what he can actually do with a full game, you know, running fast, running mean, you know, really setting the tone on defense. And next to him, Chris Board, he got the start. But, you know, I thought Kenny Young uh, – played better I, I thought Kenny Young made more plays there was one play where it looked like he kind of had a blown assignment blown assignment but Chris Board also had the same thing and maybe Chris Board is a better practicer than Kenny Young because I really like I really liked what I saw from Kenny Young more and I think maybe uh, putting Board higher on the depth chart was just a way to motivate uh, was a way to motivate Kenny Young you know he had that huge destroying hit knocked the helmet off a of Gardner Minshew god damn that was a thing of beauty I was hoping it would be a, uh, a safety, but, you know, it wasn't. It was pretty close, but it, it wasn't. And uh, that Gardner Minshew, man, he needs to tighten his helmet because that thing was flying off all game. Um, let's see, who else Who else impressed me? Oh, Tara Alaka, he snuck through the line and got a tackle on the backfield. I really like that. You know, he's not fast, but he is, you know, one of those run game type guys. But, you know, if it, speed doesn't really matter as long as you know what you're doing. You know, smarts far outweigh um, – far outweigh speed you know there is there is that point that tipping point but you know if you're a step faster and a step slower that it equals out um but he looked like he was a step quicker and he he, he looked like he's very good up against the run didn't really see much of him in coverage but all in all man all in all great great team win i know i probably missed a few players i'm gonna do another episode breaking down and previewing the preseason but i'm gonna try to end this episode pretty quickly but I really liked what I saw from the team they were playing hard playing fast especially on defense man if they can if they can bring any of that into the into the season you know I'm gonna I'm super excited man I'm very stoked to see how this team does you know uh, Green Bay is going to be coming to town hopefully 
uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to play, and hopefully we can make a fool of him too. You know, hopefully we can send some blitzes and knock his ass down. Hopefully, no, not hopefully injure him, but you know, let it be known that hey, this defense is here to stay. We are the number one defense in the league, so let's play like it, like it is. We didn't have a lot of starters playing, obviously, on the back end of the defense, but you know, I think it, it, our game will only improve with those guys in there. Uh, so with that being said, uh, it was a good game, loved it, and I'll leave you with a go. Ravens! Now, nah, nah, I'll, I'll leave it. That was all right. Thanks.